Uh, just a year ago, this was just a bunch of grown-in mess and it was ugly and it, it was disgusting. There are weeds. I'm still fighting wisteria coming up. I'm still fighting other invasive plants. Um, but it's definitely worth it and in a year from now you could at least have this. Hey everyone, I wanted to do something a little different today. I wanted to uh, do a little tour of my food forest. It's where most of my perennial uh, edible plants are growing. I'm in zone 7B. I'm in Piedmont, North Carolina, if that helps. I know I'm always looking for videos and trying to figure out, you know, if there's somebody else in my similar area and what they're growing. Um, I feel like that could always be helpful to try to determine what um, I might try to grow next just as far as climate goes and as far as uh, you know weather patterns and what might do well in, in my area or in your area. So I hope if you're in a similar growing zone this helps and gives you some ideas. Um, nothing too creative. I'm only in year one of my food forest um, so there's definitely a lot to go but I'm starting to see um, which plants and which trees are going to probably do really well and which ones um, might not do well. Um, so hopefully there's a little bit of insight here for you and I hope you enjoy the tour. Alright, so let's start on the back of the garden and we'll work our way forward. So what we've got growing here is we've got some... We've got our rooster doing some weeding. He'll probably interrupt us a few times. We've got some yellow oregano up here. Um, we have a few other things, nasturtium in the corner here. Obviously, you can see the strawberries growing. Uh, I like to grow strawberry spinach. It's not necessarily a perennial, but I do like it. And uh, so I just fill in holes in the food forest throughout the year. There goes the rooster again. And that's borage, which we plant every year just to uh, attract pollinators and add some color to the garden. Um, then we're going to come over here and we've got... Obviously marigolds, uh, those are annuals as well. A few, I, I'll just save the seeds at the end of the year and just throw them right back wherever the plant was growing and that a lot of times will help uh, reseed the area itself. All right, so I said strawberries. Um, you can see this line here of yarrow. Um, that originally was intended to be a barrier for weeds, but I did decide to just mulch all of this in and we're using it. You can see there's a little blueberry bush right here. Um, that I actually salvaged from my uh, wife's parents' house. Um, moving back over to this small bed, we've got a peach tree in year one. That's just a contender peach tree from a big box store, but you can tell it's already in year one of planting. It's already got a pretty thick, uh, thick stem, so that's really cool and exciting to see. Um, I love this plant here. This is called Lovage. Lovage is a uh, perennial it comes back it dies down to the ground here but it tastes just like celery it's a really good plant to include in your garden obviously we've got the red vein sorrel which I repeat a lot of times in the garden and we also have the uh, sage which is also repeated a bunch of times obviously borage again right there so there's a few plants that I repeat a lot um, and I try to use them in patterns but add some color and some repetition in the garden is also nice Obviously this big plant here, that's rhubarb. I'm in zone 7B, so it's debatable whether rhubarb is something that should be grown in an area this warm, but it does pretty well in the sh partial shade, especially if you get, if you get afternoon shade. Uh, this big tree is a uh, camellia that was left whenever it was here when we bought the house. Um, so that was pretty cool to have that, add some color in the winter when nothing else is blooming. Uh, right here, we will do, I'll try to get my shadow out of the way. Eh, maybe not. I've got corn interplanted here. And I like to just kind of use that, use my empty space. Um, anything that has bare dirt or has bare mulch, if it's not in a walking row, is gonna get filled with a plant. Here we just planted, There's that's barely mulched, it's mostly compost underneath there, but there's uh, the first year of asparagus planted there, so just saving, saving space. I've read a lot about companion planting and it sounds like uh, asparagus and strawberries might go together well, so you know, I didn't interplant them, but they're pretty close. Another plant that you'll see repeated a lot of times, um, I have this covered right now to keep rabbits out, but another plant that you'll see cover, repeated a lot of times is that this plant right here. Um, that's echinacea, or purple cone flower. I really like that. Uh, once again, sage, another sage variety here. I think that's the tricolor sage. All right, so let's go forward. 
Um, I do throw annuals in, as I said. So here's a tomato plant of a particular variety that I'm working on cross-pollinating. Um, I'll leave onions in to seed. I've got a, you know, more, more marigolds here. And then I've got another peach tree, a lot of peach trees for sure. Um, this peach is the Reliance peach. I'll take a step back and just get a better view of it. Good. So that's the Reliance peach tree. Uh, I just planted that about a year ago. So doing pretty well after a year. Um, bare root, obviously, for most of these. Uh, another tomato. This is a plant I'm debating putting in the ground, but I most likely will give it to somebody. It's a marshmallow plant. Uh, does really well around here. You harvest the roots. You can make some culinary marshmallows, but it's also medicinal herb. All right, so then here I have some... This plant that's hiding back there is cold hardy kiwi. I believe that's the, uh, that is a female. Um, I've got some, another one further down here. It's a pollinator uh, male. So that'll hopefully, once these grow, we'll be able to provide fruit. Um, I've read a lot about them, but let me know in the comments if you've grown them before, if you've had any luck in zone 7B or even colder. Um, this is a walking stick kale, a perennial kale or tree kale I think some people call them I'm just using it to protect that plant right now and using it to uh, fill fill a space while everything else is growing in obviously uh, you can see I planted a little bit of dill there I like to use every little bit of space that I can even here I've got a little bit of um, this is anise I think it's anise hyssop and I even have dill planted around the sides there uh, one plant I did pass up is Arnica here. That's just a plant that I bought, just an experiment. I needed to fill a space, so we'll see. I think it has a pretty yellow flower, so we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, you'll see sea berry a couple times here, or sea buckthorn. You might see there's a little bit of a row going down the edge. That was primarily to uh, reinforce my fence which is just temporary. Uh, the fence posts are not temporary, but you can just barely see the fishing line that I'm using to keep deer out right now. It seems to keep them out pretty well, but I do eventually want to put in a legitimate uh, wire fence um, that's at least six feet tall to keep the deer out and uh, maybe even grow grapes on it as well. So let's go around a little bit further. This is another peach tree. I'm a big fan of the uh, Red Haven peaches. Um, so this is a Red Haven peach, and that, that's only been in for about a year. That was bare rootstock. Uh, we'll come back um, to that in a little bit here. Uh, this row that I have planted, this row, this row of tomatoes, I'm just using these stakes to hold them up. I'm, I know I'm going to have to reinforce it later in the season, but for now, um, it'll give the plant some, some guidance, um, and it'll create a really pretty tomato wall as the year goes on, as the summer goes on. So a couple more plants, a couple new ones. Um, this is a lupine. I'll show you that. It's a flower. It's a perennial flower that's supposed to come back. And obviously you're seeing the strawberry spinach again um, and another marigold up here. And uh, we'll go slide over lupine. Another, oh, that's actually lavender in the background. Maybe we'll get a closer look at that. And more strawberries, more onions left. Um, a, Another one that's a favorite of the companion planters is the nasturtium. Definitely have a lot of that. I plant that out every year, obviously. Um, I haven't really figured out how to save seed for that. So if you know good tips on saving seed for nasturtium, let me know what I need to do to be able to save seed. This is an apple tree. Uh, we are obviously in a warmer climate, so apple trees don't necessarily do super great here. Um, this is a Granny Smith that's supposed to have lower chill hours. So definitely an experimental plant. Um, this plant right here is just a, that is a uh, ornamental allium or ornamental plant in the onion family or allium family. Um, and that's just something for decoration. It's supposed to have a pretty purple flower. So uh, obviously, as I said, I do plant annuals and mix annuals in. Here's a zinnia, a lone zinnia, and another lone zinnia up here. Um, I did seed a bunch out in an area, so hopefully there'll be a prettier um, grown-in area later. Um, this tree here is a, probably another experimental, but I'm planning on protecting it once the winter comes. 
uh, kept it in a greenhouse over this previous winter, and that is a pineapple guava. I just have an obsession with pineapple guava, so we'll see how that goes. I'm definitely going to be giving that a little bit of extra love and care over the next uh, year or two. Um, but I, there is a beautiful one growing, I believe, at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum in Raleigh, and that's what gave me the inspiration to give it a try. Just a few other things, just a little scan maybe of the, the plants in this area. Borage, um, that's actually just kale or, you know, a mixed bag of cover greens just fill in space. That's sage that I planted from seed two years ago or a year ago. There's some thyme, obviously onions mixed in with strawberry. Another plant I bought was this lavender. I just am fascinated by the, uh, the leaf shape and the pattern. It's just so different than every other lavender, obviously more thyme. That's a lemon creeping thyme. Plenty of echinacea. Zinnias thrown in under this dwarf carmine cherry. I do have cages still on my plants because this was prior to having uh, that fence and we wanted to... That was prior to that fence and we wanted to protect our plants. So we already saw most of that row, so we'll go to this row. Uh, once again, a lot of red veined sorrel. Um, these are actually poppies, a lone poppy. Um, you can tell there's some pepper plants and most of them are protected under that little mini hoop house. Um, it's not that cold, it, they probably could handle it, but I just wanted to, um, just wanted to give it an experiment and see if it would warm up the ground faster and maybe help the plants grow faster. Um, uh, right here we have artichoke. I have two varieties, the regular green globe and then the purple artichoke. Um, and I've got those repeated. I know these are going to get large, so I'm not planting too much around it. Um, just kind of leaving that area open. And uh, obviously a marshmallow like we saw earlier. Okay, so let's continue looking on. Um, this sad looking plant right here is a as a toothache plant. Um, it really can't tolerate very much cold and is definitely annual in this area, but it's a fun plant. It's cool to, uh, to give to somebody and have them chew up and have their mouth go numb, just kind of something fun. This one, this area, as you can tell below, you see the little seedlings. I don't know if it'll focus for you, um, but those are all zinnia seedlings. So hopefully we'll get some pretty cut flowers this year for my wife. Um, a red Fuji apple. Uh, most of my apples are on dwarf rootstock or semi-dwarf rootstock. I, I don't want them going out of control, and I'm going to try to keep them pretty small. I, you know, I, don't need, I don't need 800 apples from one tree. I just need, I just need uh, you know, a few apples. All right, so let's keep going. Um, more anise hyssop. This was our uh, uh, red haven peach tree. This was planted last year as well. It, I've been thinning them out, I've been cleaning them out, I've been trimming back, but I need to do some more summer pruning as opposed to winter pruning. We'll go back through here. We're seeing lupine again. We're seeing strawberry spinach. We're seeing more purple cone flower. Uh, this is an all-in-one almond, probably another experimental. Then we're going to go over here and we are going to check out this lone Nanking cherry. This was just a leftover. Um, another experimental plant. A lot of experimental. That's why I like to make these videos because I want somebody else. I want to see what else somebody else has failed at or done well at. This is, tree is, is alive. It has, a, it has little green shoots coming off of it for sure. Um, if it'll focus. Um, this is a pomegranate, a cold hardy pomegranate. I'm not sure what the pollination requirements are for it, but once again, I figured I would try it. Um, come back into this area. It's going to be a little bit sunny. Hopefully it doesn't get too white, whitened out here, but uh, alone blueberry bush. I do have blueberry bushes lining the edges of my woods back there in cages. And uh, I think I have about a dozen and maybe six different varieties. So love blueberries and in North Carolina and our area, we have very acidic soil. So they do really well. You don't barely have to do anything to them. Once again, continuing on, we're seeing the 
uh, sea berry and, a f and more marshmallow, um, some black cap raspberries growing really well, better than I thought they would in that area. So we'll see how they do when the summer gets really hot. This one is a flying dragon citrus. Once again, there's an, it's a very, very cold heart. I think they say negative 10 degrees. There's a beautiful one growing at the uh, JC Ralston Arboretum and that's what gave me my inspiration there. I believe that's tansy right here. Um, and I've repeated that a few times through the garden as well. Um, I've also planted more corn. This was a blank spot that I just figured I needed to fill in and I wanted to use it for something. I didn't want to have it empty. So we're growing two different, I know corn cross pollinates, but I just figured what the heck, let's try growing multiple varieties. This, this is a glass gem corn, which is kind of a, a fun one to do various things with. Not, not fresh eating, but um, other things, uh, corn meals and stuff like that. This is a fig tree that I got on sale. It, it is alive, it dies back to the ground. I probably should have babied it a little bit longer. Um, next year I'll, I'll most likely cover this whenever it frosts, but uh, it'll, it'll come back this year um, and uh, it should have some good life later on if I protect it in the next winter. I'm using my fence to grow peaches, or to grow uh, grapes up and I built these tiny little boxes so they could have a little bit better draining soil and a little bit a uh, little bit more fertile area to grow and so I've got a few different varieties um, I think that variety is the hemrod and then coming over here is the cannabis I believe you pronounce it and they're doing really well I just planted those they were just sticks a few weeks ago so I'm really happy to see the growth on those and to see them coming along um, It'll be really cool to see those. I want to add probably six more varieties. I love to have varieties, the different varieties. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of use for, I'm not doing any mass production, so I don't have any use for having a thousand of, of one particular plant. Um, I'm just going to scan down this row. We'll get a view of the dog too. Um, Chojuro, I think it's pronounced pear. Um, I just put in this stick here. You can barely see that stick. That's an apricot. We'll see how that goes. Um, I think there's a moon globe pear. And then down by the dog, there are some more red haven peach trees. And in the very, very, very background at the tip of our pond there uh, is some a couple different el elderberry. I believe John's and Nova are the two cultivars of that variety. I'll probably list the varieties of all these in, down below just to make sure that um, people can look them up if they want to. So this variety is, oh, this is an Anna apple, so I'm glad I checked. That's an Anna apple. And this is our cherry. Once again, just barely a year old. And that's a, a Montmorency cherry pie. I tried to pick varieties that I thought would do well in this area. Not necessarily my favorite varieties, but the varieties that would do well in this area. Uh, Fuyu persimmon, which is just coming to life. It got a little bit of uh, frost on it, so it'll probably need to catch up from that. Uh, this is a, I'll try to pronounce it correctly, um, but this is an Ichikiki Jiro persimmon, uh, just another variety that I found in my um, studies trying to figure out which what would work best in this area. Let's keep going down the row. A lot of more, a lot more red vein sorrel, uh, a tiny little moringa seedling here. Um, <clears throat> it survived actually some pretty cold weather, so we'll see. Uh, honeyberry, I'm experimenting with some honeyberry. More, more honeyberry, nasturtium, and we'll come back over here. That is a bubblegum plum tree right here. It's doing very well. That was planted last year. <clears throat> this is a, I like a lot of, I like dwarf and semi-dwarf. So this is a, a, I think a semi-dwarf or a dwarf apple tree. And it's a red Fuji. Um, supposed to have reasonably low frost hours, but we'll see how it goes. Lots of repetition here. Uh, lupine 
red vein sorrel, uh, German chamomile, uh, echinacea, lupine, more and more and more of the same. Uh, this is another red Fuji apple. I just threw this Italian parsley down below. I don't know if they're companions, but we'll figure it out. Um, you can see more pepper plants that I've thrown in here just to kind of fill spaces. There's, I have a lot of empty space, so I might as well use it. Um, this was uh, one of those tree, tree uh, kales or perennial kales. Um, you can see there's some watermelons that rotted on the ground here last year, and those are coming back. I love uh, our watermelons that we grow. This is generally where we grow them, so we'll see if uh, maybe we'll let some of those go and uh, save those. These are, I forget the exact variety. This is just kind of like a bush cherry. This little plant right here is a bush cherry that we're using to fill in um, areas and just kind of define our walkways and, and start our, our pathway there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Another plant, this is, a, this is, I don't know how long this plant will last or how well it'll do. Um, this is Santalina Gray. I, like I said, this is one that I actually bought and just recently put in. It just fascinated me. I just, usefulness is very important in the garden, but you know, aesthetics are still somewhat important. To, so, so to have some contrast in colors and shapes and sizes, I think it's a little bit important. Obviously, I like to make sure that the plant has a use, but um, it is definitely nice to have a pretty garden as well as a useful garden. A row of Nanking bush cherries. I want those to just grow, where well, hopefully those will grow in nicely for me and fill in. And more poppies, Nanking cherry, and then definitely more artichokes planted here and then further down the row here. Those will fill in with a little bit of fennel um, just in between the Nanking. So that'll get t that area will get tight. That area will definitely get tight. And we're going to come over here. And these are our last two fruit trees. Um, one's a pluot. And this one is the Flavor Punch Pluary uh, with the nasturtium and some pineapple sage thrown in there. And this one is a Flavor Supreme, Supreme Pluot. Um, those are my last two trees. I'm just gonna back up a little bit here and give you a view of the whole garden. Just kind of see what it looks like. Sorry about the annoying uh, rooster, but he's doing some weeding for us right now. So this is what I've got to work with. Um, I've got this whole area. We'll see what we decide to do with it. So definitely a beautiful area and a lot to uh, work with. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I, uh, I'm always watching videos myself about different food forests. I'd always want to learn. I always want to try to figure out what everybody else is doing, especially in my zone. And I feel like sometimes it can be really hard to find uh, people in your exact area who are growing the exact stuff that you are growing or who have a good idea of what to grow because it is definitely uh, important to have good varieties and cultivars that work well in your area uh, just to give you the best success. If you're thinking about doing this, I definitely recommend starting. Uh, don't hesitate and now's as good a time as any. Uh, just a year ago, this was just a bunch of grown in mess and it was ugly and it was, it was it was disgusting. There are weeds. I'm still fighting wisteria coming up. I'm still fighting other invasive plants, um, but it's definitely worth it. And in a year from now, you could at least have this. I know it's got a lot to go, um, but it definitely is, gives us a lot of joy and will hopefully give us a lot of food in the future. Mm -hmm.